Probably the most common question is, which SD card should I put in my drone? In this video, we'll talk about the pros, the cons, what to look out for, and what to avoid. Hi, I'm Ashton Droning on, and if you enjoy this content, smash that subscribe button, and also click the join button to see the exclusive benefits of joining the Droning On Club. Anyway, you've got your shiny brand new drone, and you don't know which SD card to put in there, which capacity, which speed, and which brand. Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about exactly what you need to look out for, and which cards you should be buying, and which you should perhaps avoid. In the video description just below, you'll see a recommendation of the card that we suggest you buy for pretty much any drone out there right now, but in the meantime, let's talk about why this card is a good fit. The first topic right now is capacity. Now instinctively, you might want to go out there and buy the biggest storage card you can possibly find, but that's a big mistake for a number of reasons. The big capacity cards ranging from 128 gig up to one terabyte not only cost a lot more, but also if you do get corrupted cards, which can quite often happen, as well as failed cards entirely where you can't even access the data anymore and they're as good enough to throw away, you lose that entire investment. The other important consideration, of course, is if you lose your drone and you've got a one terabyte card on board that's cost you a couple of hundred dollars, not only do you lose your drone, but you also lose that investment as well. And it's just not worth it. The best advice is to stick to cards of capacity 32 gig or 64 gig. Anything bigger than that is a waste and it just simply makes you lazy. When you've been out shooting footage with your drone, the natural instinct is not to bother taking that footage off the card until the card is full. The negative about that is that over time you start compiling one card full of footage from some great flights, great holidays, great adventures, and then one day that card might be corrupted or you might lose it entirely. And that means you lose all of that footage as well. By buying a smaller capacity card, you make yourself far less lazy because you know that after each shooting trip, you should be taking that footage off the card and either editing it or storing it for future editing. In addition, those smaller capacity cards are far cheaper as cheap as $15 for 32 gigs of class 10 U3 storage, and that's more than enough for most drone operators. So just to reiterate, as a common rule, stick to 32 gigs or 64 gig cards. It's far better practice to have multiple smaller capacity cards than just a couple of large capacity cards, because the investment is far more efficient. The speed of the card is really important because if your card isn't fast enough to write data at the required rate for the video that you're shooting, then that video is not gonna store properly or at all. It's become very confusing over the years because there are now lots of classifications and lots of little logos and bits of writing on these cards that you must look at very carefully. The key rule here is that for writing good quality, high bitrate footage, you need at least a class 10 and a U3 rating. The class you'll see written very clearly on the card. The U3 is slightly harder to see because it's normally very, very small. But zoom in as you'll see here and you'll see very clearly it says U3. If we take one such example card, the SanDisk Extreme Pro, that has a maximum writing speed of 95 megabytes per second. Now take that in consideration of the DJI Mavic Air 2, which when it writes 4K footage at 120 megabits per second, it only actually writes at 15 megabytes per second. So a card capable of 95 megabytes per second is more than adequate. Application class is a fairly new rating that you'll see on cards, and you may feel that you must go and buy the A2 rating card. You don't need to look out for an A1 or an A2 class card because it's completely irrelevant for drones, because when drones write footage to a card, they write it in sequence like this. The A rating is all about application access. And if you think about the hard drive of your computer, the hard drive is constantly delivering data from all over the card from lots of different segments. And the A rating is all about what's called random access rather than sequential access. So therefore, when you've got a drone that's simply writing footage sequentially, the A rating is simply irrelevant. As the old saying goes, buy cheap, buy twice. And from my personal experience, that's absolutely the case with SD cards. It's tempting, isn't it, to buy that really cheap, massive capacity card out there, but we've all made that mistake before and we've regretted it. I've seen 128 gig cards out there for the same price as a 32 gig card of a much better brand. And that 120 gig card is 
far more likely to fail after a few uses. Some of them are even dead on arrival, and that's really not a good start. I've lost count of the cheap SD cards I've bought over the years that I've simply had to throw away because they're just unreliable. Stick to the big brands, and I have to say SanDisk is pretty much my go-to option in terms of brands for any kind of SD card storage. Those cards just work, they're well built, and they have a good warranty as well. So don't buy cheap because you will have to buy twice. These cards are effectively mini hard drives, and with any hard drive, you have to maintain them. Now, operating systems such as Windows and Mac OS maintain your hard drive for you. You don't need to really worry about it. They manage the sectors and blocks and defragmentation status of your hard drive for you. But with an SD card, it's not really gonna have that kind of care and attention when it's plugged into a drone. For that reason, every now and then, it's a really good idea to take all the footage off those cards and just blank them, just format them fresh. It just means that it's less complex for the device accessing them. And there's another big advantage as well. There's been times when I've deleted a clip of footage off an SD card and I've not been able to recover it because there have been so many deleted files on that card that it's just impossible to find the one that I actually want and normally its state is unrecoverable. But if you do frequently hard wipe and format your SD cards, if you do accidentally delete a file, it's far easier to recover it afterwards. So just to summarize, every now and then, just take all the footage off your cards, give them a good proper hard format by plugging them into your computer or even using the format option on the drone itself. You'll find it in the app under the storage settings by the SD card. And the final one is the weight of the card. The bigger the storage capacity of that SD card, the more it weighs and the less time your drone's gonna fly for. Now, of course, I'm only joking. And if anybody takes this seriously, please just unsubscribe. So there's the droning on guide for buying a good SD card for your drone to make sure you don't lose footage and you don't become lazy. In terms of recommendations, there is only one card that I recommend these days for pretty much every drone out there today. And it's called the Sandisk Extreme Pro. The class you're looking for, of course, is class 10. It's a U3 card, and I'd recommend either the 32 or the 64 gigabyte capacity version, and buy a handful of them, buy five or six so you've got them in reserve. As mentioned earlier, it's a far better option to have more smaller capacity cards than just a couple large capacity cards. This card specifically is priced at only about $15 for a 32 gig and about $30 for the 64, so that makes it an absolute bargain. There's a link in the video description if you want to buy it right now, so click on that and do some shopping. I hope this was useful. If you've got any more questions about SD cards, just comment below and I'll do my best to answer. And in the meantime, hit that subscribe button. And of course, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if your face suffers from corruption. Thanks very much for watching.